that she had trigeminal neuralgia until three years until three years of suffering. And I said, Auntie, how come you never told me? He goes, I think I can help you. And so I'm going to go back a little ways. I got involved in trigeminal, I mean, sorry, stem cell therapy back in 2009. Um, I met uh, Dr. Um, Dr. Habib Chorpi, who is the, the founder of Invitrix that manufactures the, the stem cells. And at that time, we were um, researching the stem cells derived from fat cells. But fat cells has a disadvantage in the, in the sense that it has to be harvested from you. And uh, some of the issues is that it has a surgical procedure of going through and basically doing a liposuction, processing that, and then putting it back to you. One of the major disadvantages of, of that stem cells being harvested from you is that depending on the age of the patient, and with me, it would be a top harvested in me, it would be a 55 year old stem cell, as opposed to the umbilical cord, which is a day zero, day one old stem cell. And if you can kind of compare fresh and, and then me, I, I take the fresh one all day long. But my, my, my 88 year old aunt, I'm gonna go back, suffered from that, and hers was a uh, young one. It would just kind of kind of come and go, and her intensity was 10 times a day, I mean, in terms of frequency, intensity of nine out of 10, and uh, frequency, and the, 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 let's see, frequency of 10 times a day, intensity of nine out of 10, and, uh, and the duration was three minutes long. And so I don't know if a lot of you guys have had the durations of that long, but I would just, and in terms of triggers, anything, just cold water, air, chewing, eating, taking a shower, basically anything that, that, that triggers you is, is there. And I said, Auntie, let's, let's go ahead and do this. And um, being a dentist, the application was oral. It's well within my scope of practice to, to, to go ahead and handle trigeminal neuralgia or basically any oral facial pain. And I, and I try to stay within my scope of practice in terms of this. I don't do it for anything else other than head and neck and associated structures. But within the application, oral application of trigeminal neuralgia, uh, of the injection on the side of the TM side, um, we got relief basically within the first two weeks. And to the point now that we are about three or four months into this, and into her initial um, application of the, of the stem cell that was injected on the TN side, and basically we have reduced the, the frequencies down from 10 times a day to about one time a day. The intensity from nine out of 10 to probably about one or two and duration has gone down from like three minutes to just maybe just a few seconds. And so the, the, the intensity, the duration, and the frequency has decreased dramatically for her. Now, um, I just wanna, I just, so I'm gonna introduce, I'm gonna come back, and what I'll be doing is doing some, some case studies, and I will actually share with you some of the text messages that I've been um, receiving from my patients later on, and Obviously, because of HIPAA, I've, I've crossed out their names and, and everything like that. But, but the core message of, of, of raw data, not modified by me and, and, and not like this, is exactly what would be coming from you directly to me. And, and, um, and so it's really a self-report of their, of their progress based on the stem cell um, uh, therapy that we've been doing. But I, I want you to hold back, and I'm gonna come back and share with you my clinical data in terms of what I've been seeing directly in my office. But I'm gonna introduce to you our scientist, who's gonna explain to you a little bit about the, uh, the science behind the stem cells. And his, his name is Mr. Diego Andiamo. Did I say that right, Diego? Andiamo. Andiamo. <laughs> come on, come on, I'm so sorry. And uh, he works directly with uh, the company in Vitrix. And we have some slides to share with you. And then later on, I'll be able to also, I also have a video slide, uh, I'm sorry, uh, a YouTube 
of my, one of my actual patients that I was I did not record, but was um, is part of a of a stem cell company that deals with joints and 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 joint repair and basically degenerative uh, degenerative pain of the joints. And he also uses the stem cell, the same one for joint repair. Their medical director suffers directly from trigeminal neuralgia pain with some facial paralysis. Not just paralysis, but also numbness. And so you'll get to see uh, a video of that a little bit later on. But uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you Diego. And um, please give him a warm welcome. <laughs> Let's see if I can get this uh, working. Do you tell them a little bit about your background, your degree? And... Yeah, so my background is in clinical nutrition. That's my bachelor's at UC Davis. And UC Davis is known for its nutrition background. And I got into it because I wanted to be an MD initially, and I thought I would need more nutrition background. And then from there, I hopped over to stem cell research, and I got my master's in that. Uh, I did my research at UC Davis. I focused on the glioblastoma, which is a brain tumor, specifically pediatrics, and the mutation that happens on the histone, which is kind of what the DNA wraps itself around. And there's mutations that can happen on those histones. And I focused on that. And then uh, after I graduated, um, I went over to Beatrix. I've been there for about a year. And I focused most of my attention on cold blood stem cells, orange jelly stem cells, really any first tissue related stem cells. And what I found is that through anecdotal evidence of patients reporting back to the doctors that we supply, it's helping them with a wide range of disorders. And uh, I'll go over why that might be happening right now uh, in the next slide. And, and we've been speaking around the world, too. Yeah, I actually just got back from Taiwan last week. Um, I gave a presentation there to a series of doctors who are interested in using cold blood. And also, they're also interested in something else called chimeric antigen receptor T cell therapy. And it's for those of you who have uh, some cancers, it's a way to modify the patient's own immune system. You take out the you take out the cells from the patient's immune system, you grow them, and then you give them directions to attack the cancer. You inject it back into the patient, and there's about eighty percent success rate in terms of preventing cancer that way, which is really amazing. Right now, it's mostly for uh, lymphomas, and not really solid tumors. Solid tumors are still something we're working on, but it's really exciting. Work. And I seem to be having trouble with this. Minor difficulties. <laughs> I can do without it too if, uh, if needed. 